Alright folks, I'm still here on the Greenway, and I have another set of interesting tracks for us to find out about. Haven't identified them yet, we'll see if we can. All right, yes, you're right, there's no tracks here. But where else would these ones start? Check them out. A Little bit of a mess right there. Looks like maybe a, a landing, huh? Let's find out here. No previous tracks. Just some drips from the snow melting here. Looking around the tree. Nowhere else these could have come from. Well, let's assume this is our starting point here. Let's try and fall. Got some small feet there. Maybe some claw marks down inside that one. There you go. Oh, underneath these small brushes here. All the way around there. Let's see what that goes. Anything interesting yet? Oh, there's a good foot shape there. Almost looks like they have thumbs. Around these trees here. go between them. Must have gone up the tree. Let's see, if he went up, where does he come down? Nowhere around that tree. These ones are pretty close together, though. If he came back down this tree here. There we go. You can see some pretty good definition of the foot itself down inside those tracks here. Scallop pattern, we've got these about every, well, 15 inches. A couple closer together here. And we'll decide to speed up and scamper across. Alright, here we go. Pause here. Let's look at these tracks. See a good definition of the toes there in the front. The track's not too old. Of course, it's a little older than the snowmobilers, of course. So let's skip across here. How depressing is that? Here we go. Another nice set. All four here, we don't see the long feet of a rabbit. Uh, which has a similar pattern and distance between the tracks. Of course, they're a little smaller, a little closer together. I'm going to say these ones are a squirrel here, obviously, with the uh, jumping up and down from the trees, making uh, good leaps here over the deep snow. A little good definition down inside that one as well. And you can see them hopping all the way down there uh, to the trunk of that tree, and that's where they terminate here. A squirrel must have Kept on going up. And here we have Mr. Squirrel's nest. Here we go, way up in the tippy top trees, uh, not too far from the trail. Hello and welcome back for part two of episode two of Ridge Walker. I'm here today to talk about another activity that you can find to do on natural outdoor attractions like this across the world, and it's called geocaching. Geocaching is a new hobby of mine, and it uses GPS devices and also GPS-enabled cell phones to find hidden containers. Uh, and there are over a million of them hidden worldwide in uh, places such as fork trees and under benches and, and all manner of locations. Uh, and inside these containers are a, a, any number of small uh, trinkets and, and tradable items that people bring from sometimes hundreds of miles away uh, to leave in, in one of these containers and they take something else out and try and get it to a, another container. Some of these have goals, uh, some of them are trackable so you can find out just where they've been. Uh, it's really a very interesting hobby and uh, as far as I can tell there should be one here uh, nearby in the camera frame. Hopefully be able to see this, it'll be worth a shot anyway. Uh, here looking at my iPhone I have a, a folder here for uh, geocaching specific applications here. If I go to uh, the geocaching app from Groundspeak, the actual creator of the geocaching website itself, um, it's a really fantastic app. Of course, it costs about uh, $10 currently, but it's well worth it here for the uh, for the number of features that it gives you. Uh, for instance, if I were to go up here to uh, to the main menu 
I can perform a search for nearby geocaches. So let's go back to the very front page here. Here we go. All right, I can click Find Nearby Geocaches, and the GPS uh, signal on my phone will let the uh, the system know where exactly I am, and it'll pull up the nearest ones. Here's one at a local supermarket here, not too far away. Fernatine, that means uh, Men of Fire in uh, in um, Gaelic, actually, Irish language. Uh, so that one's nearby as well. And if we look through here, oh, here's a couple caches on the Greenway. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. Noah and Isaac's cache, that one's here on the Greenway as well. And we can even view these in map mode. So let's take a look at that for us here. Where the little blue dot and the nearby geocaches are uh, the green flags. Now, ones that I've already found can be seen with the smiley faces on them. Here we have the average geocache. This is a weatherproof lock and lock container, and it's a good size, so there's a lot of room inside for tradable items. Uh, and you can see on the front here we have a note that says official geocaching game piece. Please do not remove, and also an email address to contact the person who's actually placed this particular geocache. Uh, this is left for uh, these notes are left for uh, mugglers, as we call them, people who aren't involved in geocaching itself. Uh, an amount of discretion should be used when looking for a geocache uh, because we're trying to keep people who. Um, don't have regard for possession and who wouldn't appreciate uh, the nature of the hobby itself. People who might uh, tamper with geocaches or, or leave garbage in them, as sometimes happens. Uh, so if you're in an area uh, geocaching and you, and you notice that there are a lot of people nearby uh, who might not uh, be into it, <laughs> uh, definitely try and keep things on the down low. Okay, the official geocaching game piece. This one is called Greenway Serenity. Now if we were to remove this here and look on the inside, we can see, oh look, there we have the people who placed it, uh, by the name of Cow Gods. Now, if you look inside this geocaching here, in addition to that note on the outside, here's some information for people who might not be in the know about geocaching. Uh, it's got some information about where to find it on the internet and how to get involved if you might be interested. Also on the inside are our tradable items. This, of course, is the logbook. Now, this stays with the geocache, and this is for people who find the geocache to sign, possibly to leave a little note here, leave the date that they signed it. Stamps are becoming quite popular as well. Now looking on the inside, we have a number of small tradables here. Uh, a little toy frisbee with Tigger on it, uh, well, a Garth Brooks tape, ink pen to sign the logbook, and a, a number of other things here. Now, uh, again, uh, some items that you leave in these geocaches here are what we call trackables. Now those uh, have barcodes or a specific code that you can place on the internet and find out just exactly where these items have been and if they have a particular goal of places that they'd want to go. Uh, it's a fun way to get involved, especially with uh, uh, activities like Girl Scouting and Boy Scouting, where they, uh, well, they'll, they'll leave a particular item in a geocache uh, with the goal of, say, to reach every national park in the United States. And if you're traveling that way and you happen to pick up one of these items, you can help uh, further it along. When you're finished signing the logbook and trading items if you're going to, always be sure to replace the geocache uh, the same way that you found it, if not better. You want to leave it uh, definitely hidden and well camouflaged so that the, the next people that come along looking for it uh, will have a great time on the hunt as well. <laughs>